little bit of extra defense. So I think this is going to give the kind of structure where Faison gets to zoom in and around, giving support where he can, and Barraza with Cody Travis, that's going to be the main bruiser, whether it be on the axe or the blasters going for those setups. Here we go, we're starting it off on Apocalypse here. Cody Travis waiting for that weapon spawn. There it is, but Red Team has control of that corner. Cody managed to find that axe for himself here. We're going to see who's going to be able to hold the center stage, and it looks like right now... Red Team's finally managed to grab it here. How's the blue team going to get it back? Oh, but Faye is on. Yeah, that's the problem. He's got to get a weapon back first. Finally does. There's the sword, but immediately oh. smacked out with the 1-2 delayed combo. And it, it's tough, right? Because I feel like sometimes in 2v2s, you can tell your partner, okay, this guy's giving me trouble. Let's swap. But with both of these members, you don't really have someone you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'd rather fight them. Yeah, that's the thing. I think Cody and Faison, they're going to have to go for a lot more of that team play. Just Oof. because, you know, their team, like so many others, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And part of that is just getting blasted around. Sandstorm finally falling. Boomy in danger and Faison cleaning it up. Now they've got the power play against Sandstorm for just a few seconds. Yeah, that, that's a little bit of a funny scenario there, right? Because Team Red ends up losing their first few stocks, all due to a blunder from Boomy there, accidentally KOing his partner, and then getting punished for that and sent off stage, and ultimately losing his stock there as well. So great opportunity for Team Blue. We see Faison get a little bit of a combo there with the D-Light there off of the platform, but we'll see how much further they can push it. Faison in high damage, but Boomy and Sandstorm, they seem happy to just run the power play that they can against Cody Travis. You know they've got tons and tons of practiced combos, and they're looking to put them to use. Okay, and so far so good here. Sidelight almost gets a recovery there from Faison, ultimately hitting Cody Travis. Beautiful conversion. It's going to KO off the right, and it KOs on the left. I feel like almost on the exact same frame that these guys are going to drop. Yeah, that was crazy timing there. Perfect coordination. The pool's open. Synchronized swimming, synchronized KOs. Exactly what I like to see. And Cody definitely showing off Barraza's defense. The only one still on two stocks. And he's got a while left to live yet. And that's the great thing about not only Barraza, but Cody Travis as a player is he always tends to live oh. for a long time, but he's also doing a lot of damage the entire time. There's a lot of other people who will stay alive, but because they're trying so hard to stay alive, they aren't really putting out hitboxes as much as they normally would. But Cody is not one of those players. Yeah, no stranger in 2v2. He knows the rhythm. How to Scoops. keep it going. Uh-oh. Now Faison has got to make his way back to stage, and he's unarmed. Oh. Cody almost caught out into the team combo. Yeah, Cody has to be scared of jumping here now, because that's twice now Sandstorm has gone for that read and just been a little oh, no. bit too uh, early there. But now it's all up to Cody Travis. Faison uh, getting executed on the way out there. But yes. now we have a 1v1. All right, so he's got a little bit of the range advantage, but unfortunately the blasters, they do take a little bit longer to fire off some of their attacks, so you've got to make sure each one hits. Okay. Cody, no weapon. <laughs> the spin dash okay. coming out from Sandstorm there. Man, he was just reading that return to ground. Oh, oh caught the dodge! Like Cody Travis is an actual god with that read. Taking the match for the blue team, setting this off 1-0, monumental. Oh my goodness. Wow, I'm telling you, man. Cody Travis knows exactly where to cast his fishing rod there. Probably Jeez. had a great day. With I'm, I'm the, watching uh, this replay on stream right now. I know, right? Like, he grabs this. Where are you going to dodge? Oh, wait, I already know. Uh, See ya. He hits him with the down air, back dashes into the neutral signature. Like, what? Who does that? Cody Travis put some his of beauty on that name, man. He ain't going to say it no more. Cody Travis. Wow. What a way to bring that around, man. I'm sure Sandstorm was equally a surprise getting hit by that. Didn't expect that. You know, probably thought he was going to get hit by some kind of follow-up. Maybe a D-Light. Maybe a Sarah yep. or something. Maybe thought he was going to hang on for a little while longer. But Cody Travis completely shutting down any thoughts of hope with that NSIG Jeez. hook, line, and sinker. All right, so snatching out game one in spectacular fashion. They're now shifting over to Mammoth Fortress for game number two. 
Faison still sticking with the Hattori here. Going to go ahead and try to use that speed to his advantage. The speed does help a lot in terms of trying to, uh, you know, shark your opponents from below, but also maintain that staying control. And Cody's been doing such a good job just racking up this damage with these jump dares on the blasters. It's actually, there we go again. Ooh, oh, yeah, that's the there. thing. They're such a good setup tool because they last for a long time, and that can be an absolute detriment in 2v2 because it leaves you exposed, but it sets it up so well for your teammate to just use it like a T-ball. And I think the other thing is, too, is that the gun down air is so non-committal, really, right? You're able to drift with it, and it covers below you, which if you're trying to anti-air it, unless you have something that has a clear disjoint, you'll oftentimes get caught by the down air trying to hit it. Hmm. Oh. Now Sandstorm is off this side, making his way back onto stage, getting a bit of a turnaround. Okay. How are they going to play this out here? Looks like Cody ended up losing the 1v1 scenario there against Sandstorm, so Faison is going to go back and recuperate. Oh. What? Beautiful trade there from Faison. I love that he was able to go ahead and connect that recovery, because otherwise it would have been complete favor Team Red there, but he's able to keep this uh, fairly even. But man, Boomy's on his last stock. Hold on. What happened here? Oh no. That's not good. That is not good for Team Red. Yeah, he's been getting torn apart. It's really just been getting caught out in certain scenarios where, you know, his teammate Sandstorm hasn't been able to apply any real pressure relief just because he's been focusing on the cannon. It does have a lot of movement, but you're locked into that whenever you do the side air, so it's a little bit tougher to rotate to save your teammate. Here we go. So, I mean, this means it's going to be a lot more work to be done from Sandstorm here as Boomy is very close now to being completely not a factor in this game at all. And I like that he runs to the right side of the stage here to buy some space for Boomy to actually get back on and exert some pressure here. Oh, caught with the recovery. Sandstorm now down to his final stock. They've got the momentary 2v1 against Boomy. All right, manages to stabilize and stay alive. And Boomy at this point has so much damage racked up that he's scared of any sort of hitbox. Mm, there we go, the recovery from Phazon, secure it. Sandstorm has one stock left and is already in the yellow based off of the legend that he's playing here. And I, I can only imagine, you know, one down light, one neutral light from Team Blue and it's gonna be a wrap. Oh, all right, well, there's one. He's got three more to cut through. Wow, threatens with that whip toss from so far away. Oh, caught. Where's the conversion? Gets Ooh. a little extra. Oh. The delay. Double down it. Oh, my goodness. He has no dodge now, which makes it oh. easy for Faison to dash in there with that unarmed DC because he had to burn that dodge to avoid that sair we saw Cody Travis go for. So Faison said, thank you, Cody. I'll go ahead and clean this one up. All right. So continuing their momentum, Cody and Faison now up 2-0 in the set. Umi and Sandstorm leaving open Mammoth, Shipwreck, and Apocalypse. Okay. Now I do not know what the stage pick is going to be here. Ah, not shipwreck. Not shipwreck. I'm hoping not shipwreck. I feel like that's Well, if you're Okay, yep. Mammoth. Okay. Yep. I was like if I were Cody and Phazon, I would be happy with either of the other stages just not shipwreck falls. Not against these two. <laughs> you know. I, I would Sandstorm. never want to fight Sandstorm on shipwreck. That's way too terrifying. Here we go, game three. Boomy and Sandstorm, they've got to find some sort of adjustment to bring this set back. Oh, and Sandstorm going for the, the hard reads off stage here. He wants those early KOs. He wants to bring this back in a commanding fashion here to try and set the momentum if they go into later games. But we're going to see if Faison and Travis allow that to oh. happen here as it's looking kind of tough right now. Definitely dire straits. Oh, beautiful interruption. Boomy's Whoa. coming in, smacking him away. Unfortunately, getting tagged himself. Oh, Faison dropped that punish. I cannot believe that. Clean whiff from Boomy there, but the D light just narrowly missing the punish on the side signature. But that should be an easy oh, punish. Yeah. And there it is. Man, that's such a cool setup. Oh my gosh. And again, even when there's no platform underneath, Boomy able to just set him up perfectly for Sandstorm to knock him out. Go now, Team Blue manages to pick one up on Boomy. Sandstorm could be taken out here. That's twice now they've dropped that conversion. If Cody was able to line up the recovery correctly, there was a pretty good chance there that Sandstorm would be KO'd off the top. But because of that, now Sandstorm's back on the stage, has a little bit more room to work with, and a lot more damage that he'll be happy to add on. 
Jesus, man. Definitely extending his stock well. Now he's unarmed, swapping over to the axe. Gets a big chop onto Cody, going for the ground pound. All right, he's been met really nice. mixing up his options, whether he's covering high or covering low after an initial starter. And right now, Cody has just called the correct dodge every single time. Ooh. Goes for the ground pound. Phase on looking for that big hit, unable to find it. Sandstorm still on his first stock. And I'm still thinking about that conversion they could have had earlier where Sandstorm could have probably been well into a second stock now, but because of the drop of the recovery from Cody Travis, he's still hanging in there. Sandstorm looking for a little bit more, and he's already such a hard opponent to deal with to start. That's gonna be a nice punish though coming up from phase on. Not enough to KO, but Cody finally getting that first stock off of Sandstorm. My gosh, they had to do so much damage to him. A blaster's down air scoring the knockout from just about stage height. Now Cody down to his final stock. They're trading it. Boomy follows as well. And Sandstorm was able to pick up the KO there with the Axe Air, but the thing that I want to point out about it is that Sandstorm has multiple times in this set already shown how proficient he is with hitting his opponent with the uppermost hitbox of the Axe Air, where it looks like it's not going to hit, and then before you know it, you find yourself flying toward the kill box. As that perfect spacing, because especially if you're dropping down, it gives a little bit of extra safety to that Axe Side Air. <laughs> oh my gosh, from all the way across the other side of the stage, Sandstorm Rolling just around. wheeling in for victory. <laughs> Speed of sound, man. He was completely ready to escape from the city there. And there we go. Both members oh. of Team Blue getting caught by the down six. Stays active for so long. Sandstorm just going to go off stage and go for the ground pound because why not? He's starting to feel the confidence come back to him as Wall Slip starts to fall into play for Cody Travis, but he makes his way back onto the stage. Sandstorm fighting with so much fervor here. Boomy on his final stock. Cody on his Set final stock. Up. Who's going out? Ones to watch are definitely Boomy and Cody Travis. Boomy getting smacked off stage. They've got the momentary 2v1. Look at that pressure relief. Oh, phase on. oh but Sandstorm just pivots at the last moment. Scores that side air, and now they've got the 2v1 extended against Phazon. And Phazon has to KO Boomy first. Then yep. KO the second stock of Sandstorm. Then defeat Sandstorm yet again while being all in the oh, red. Oh no. Nice. Oh, weapon toss. <laughs> and Sandstorm just covering the low option so confidently. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Team Tempo Storm not out of this yet. Managing to put one game on the board here, still need to win two yeah. more if they want to be sitting in the grand finals, or rather in the winner's finals, versus Simba and Santi, who, you know, I imagine at this point are probably practicing among themselves or something, make sure they don't get iced out because they know what kind of uh, competition they have coming up next for themselves in the bracket. Oh, yeah. All right, so what are Cody and Faison going to leave open? Got Mammoth Great Hall Apocalypse and Crystal Temple left. They've just got one more to ban. And at this point, okay, they're actually going to ban Great Ooh. Hall. Okay, I like that. I oh, like wow. that a All lot. Right. I feel like Crystal Temple is one of those maps that at this point in the set, you don't want to go there. Whether you're winning or whether you're losing, it just changes the dynamic of doubles so much that Three, going to that stage two, could is, is one, very much a wild four. card this late into the set. So, Lumi Sandstorm, like, all right, you know what? Let's go right back to Mammoth Fortress. We've already proven we can win here. We are the two best players in the world. Let's just keep it nice and simple and just play our hearts out. Yeah, I think that is why a lot of people like just continuously going to Mammoth. Oh my gosh, Boomy with the double down air read. It just lets, it's the most conducive to making gameplay adjustments mm -hmm. rather than any uh, larger legend or stage adjustments. Oof. There we go, the recovery not to connect there. Phase on with the D lights there. Needs to scare off Boomy so Cody can make it back to stage. Run away from that spin dash. Doesn't want to get caught yet again. And there we go. The side signature not quite enough to KO, but both members of Team Red stuck on the side here. And you see, this time, this is one of the few matches where the damage build has been even across all players. Usually it's a little bit of a checkboard pattern or somebody just getting caught out way too much, but here it's just everybody taking too much damage. Yeah, it's like, who wants some? It looks like the next one is going to be Cody. Gets a little bit of a lunch from the cafeteria on that one. Just a little bit of slop added to the plate. And another one gets sent packing, flying a packaged lunch and some extra. 
And he sent the phase on there. Now, granted, Cody, not fearful of getting KO'd off the top there with so much defense on Barraza. You know he's going to be surviving that blast of recovery. But still, you probably have a little bit of yourself going, oof. Still was close, though. I know, I know. It was looking, it was looking like inches. Oh, wow. beautiful interruption and Cody turning it around to score the knockout. Two stocks apiece. Phase on. Holding the corner here, looking for these stray hits when he can. And it, it's always scary being the person to swing first in 2v2s because you know some member of the opposing team is looking to oh. interrupt him. Just like we've seen, that's where Sandstorm's getting a ton of mileage. And every time that Boomy gets to do that with the Ooh. hammer, each hammer swing does so much damage. And that far up off the top of the screen, Faison's now down to his final stock. Cody Travis clearly in danger. Yeah, luckily the red team didn't really pursue him much off stage. Cody getting the very last hit of that gravity cancel D-Light. I don't think he was ready to convert off of it. But, you know, final stock is Faison here, which, you know, once again, is playing a Tori, does have a decently low amount of defense there. I think he's rocking the 5 defense stat though, so probably somewhere closer to the middle, but definitely needs to hang on a little while long here. And it stinks for Faison because I feel like a lot of the scenarios have been him landing a D-Light recovery or a D-Light stare in scenarios where they're just this close, you know, one step away from KOing, but just not quite enough damage. Oh my gosh, the quick freestyle conversion. Just all that extra damage. Oh, beautiful interruption. Sandstorm would have been done there, but Boomy just busting it up. Yeah, and you know Faison is holding his breath at this point, right? He's like, oh man, this oh, is yeah. getting <laughs> extremely scary. Any hit could do it. Boomy off stage. Sandstorm holding the corner, forcing him, uh, trying to hold some stage for him. But they're just going to let Boomy chill off the stage. And I don't know if I like that, but Cody able to get that ground pound, not enough to KO with the wall bounce, rather the stage bounce. And I don't know. It's. it's getting dire here. We might be going to, to game five. And they're certainly looking to make it that way. Uh oh, Sandstorm just getting around Faison's edge guard, but man, that was too close. Yeah, Faison was Can't able give to give up a stock. You still looking for it too? Oh, what an oh. interrupt! Man, Boomy with the laser sight, the laser guided hammer, closing the deal on both of them there. We're going to game five. I don't even think that was necessarily a bad play from Team Blue, right? They were going off stage. No. Both of them had zoomed in on his Sandstorm. If we can blow all of his recovery options now, find that last final blow to actually secure the KO and have it be a 2v1, it'll be perfect for us to go ahead and close out this set 3-1. But Boomy was just the perfect positioning to go ahead and Ooh. shut out all of their dreams right there. It looks like we've got Faison maybe thinking about a legend swap. Honestly, if there's a time, now's the time. I honestly believe that. I think that Tori's been doing all right, but if oh, he wants to go right. for a legend swap, you know, mix it up. You can do that, but it looks like he's staying tried and true with the Tori. He thinks he's been performing well enough with that legend. Let's see what maps they end up banning out here, TWK. What are the odds we go right back to Mammoth for game five? Apparently None. Zero. They banned that out. <laughs> Second map banned? Oh my gosh. Apocalypse. All right, yeah, yeah. This is the other one that I know Boomy and Sandstorm are more than happy to play on, especially because I, I feel like Amethyst gets some amazing options off of that top platform, whether it's slide charging the side signatures that both run and you get a little bit of diagonal coverage as you drop, but it's just incredibly powerful. I also think the stage is kind of like a, like, diet Mammoth Fortress, right? Like, it doesn't have the yeah. platform kind of going off uh, and being like a little bit of added ledge, but you know kind of the makeup where this platform is the movement of it The walls are a little bit different, but it's more or less a slightly different variant of it And if they don't have mammoth fortress available, I think this is the next best bet for them. Ooh, Boomy again just setting him up perfectly for sandstorm to get the flyby can inside air his side stick coming out from Boomy gonna lead to a nice punish from Cody Travis and Faison going to a three-piece combo and almost a KO off the top. Faison once again Ooh. going for it, and this time just enough juice to secure the KO. And that's what they need, man. Oh no! Steered just out of the way. I, I think he might have not wanted to get caught out by whatever punish attempt mm -hmm. the, the red teammate would have had. But man, they gave up that knockout. Luckily, they still got it before either one of them went down. Now here's the thing, last game, the team that took the first two knockouts, even though damage build was, you know, 
even across the board, <laughs> they ended up taking the entire match. So this bodes well for Faison and Cody. So far, I mean, getting extra damage on Sandstorm's second <gasps> stock is definitely somewhere you want to be. Faison holding that corner. Both members of Team Red trying to fight their way in the center, but the blue team has control of center stage now. As I say that, red team finally managed to get their hits, and there's so much damage dragged off both members of Team Blue that they get sent flying so far that the red team's immediately able to switch the stage positioning. But if the blue team's able to keep up what they've been doing, this could be them going to the winter finals. And Faison definitely keeping Sandstorm at arm's length with that spear. Looking to just extend this out. Whoa! Scraped right by that cannon ground pound. But Boomy there to clean up the corner guard. There you have it. Boomy throwing out the side stick. Tries to get punished by Faison with Sandstorm. Immediately there saying, yeah, I thought you'd do that. And getting a hit of his own. And it, it's slowly becoming a little bit of a closer game. Oh. Cody, though, putting dreams of that close game to rest with that recovery. That sandstorm went off the side to try and stabilize. Boomy was able to sweep right in with that invulnerability from respawn and claims the stock on Cody Travis. We got two and one for each team. Now, if they can get a clean hit on the Sandstorm, it would be a very great spot to be in for the blue team here. I mean, Cody Travis is playing already a pretty beefy legend. And some extra damage from the team, actually. Oh, my oh. goodness. Umi perfectly dodging through that ground pound, but uh, gets caught. Big ground pound. He's going to the other side. Cody nice rotates back. with the down air to seal the deal. Boomy is out of here. Sandstorm left alone. And just like that, we could be seeing... A you know, the the, pre the world champions of 2v2s getting sent down to the loser's bracket here if Cody Travis and Faison are able to finish their plate here. Alright, so it's three stocks on the blue team. Every little bit of damage that they get onto Sandstorm just brings them that much closer to Grand Finals. Sandstorm, he wants the cannon. He doesn't think he has the explosive power with the axe, but he may not even get oh. that chance. Clean amount of damage racked up there. Almost was a little bit extra damage, but Sandstorm getting sent off stage made it a little bit harder for Faison to connect that conversion. Oh. Over in the skies with the teleports. Down air, Sandstorm. Another down air. Faison and Cody are moving into grand finals. Yeah, they had a little bit of a... A hiccup there, you know, they started off the set 2-0, and it looked like for a while there that they were going to bring it Jeez. back, uh, reverse 3-0, but it looks like Faison and Cody Travis were able to hang on for dear life there and fight back in that game five, and that's the luxury of winning those first two games. You have three chances yeah. to go ahead and win a game to make sure that you're going into winner's finals. So good stuff to them taking out the world champions and moving on to the winner's finals to go up against Simba and Santi.